Good morning students. Today I am going to start chapter number 5 the judiciary from civics. And today's topics are what is the role of judiciary? And number 2 is upholding the law and enforcing fundamental rights. Point number 3 what is an independent judiciary? And point number four is, what is the structure of courts in India? So students, first of all, I am going to explain the overview of this chapter. So students, as you know very well that our constitution of India secures justice to all its citizens apart from securing liberty, equality, and promoting fraternity. And in Indian democracy, the Supreme Court plays important role of safeguarding the fundamental rights of citizens, which includes providing fair justice also. So students, First of all, we are talking about the judiciary and safeguarding of the fundamental rights of the people. So students, one question will arise here that why we need these courts? Alright? And what is the rule of law? So students, as I told you in my previous explanation that the laws apply equally to all persons and that a certain set of fixed procedures need to be followed when a law is violated. So students, to enforce this rule of law, we have a judicial system that consists of the mechanism of courts that the citizen can approach when a law is violated. And as an organ of the state, the judiciary plays a very important role in the functioning of Indian democracy. All right. So students, as you know very well that justice, which is the soul of democratic society, must be administered without fear or favor. For integrity, impartiality and intelligence are some of the important characteristics of the independent judiciary in a democratic setup. So students, again one question will arise here that what does an independent judiciary? It means So students, independent judiciary means judicial independence the ability of courts and judges to perform their duties free of any influence or control by others, whether governmental or private person or by any authority or by any institution. And the term is also used in a normative sense to refer to the kind of independence that courts and judges ought to possess. All right, students, understood? Okay. Now, your first topic is what is the role of judiciary? All right. So, students, in topic number one, as I told you, about the role of judiciary. 
सो स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नो वेरी वेल दैट कोर्स टेक मेनी डिसीजन्स ऑन अ वेरी लार्ज नंबर ऑफ इशूज ओनली फॉर द सेफ गार्ड ऑफ द कॉमन पीपल एंड द स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो लाइक कोर्ट कैन डिसाइड दैट नो टीचर कैन बीट ए स्टूडेंट्स और अबाउट द शेयरिंग ऑफ रिवर वॉटर्स बिटवीन टू स्टेट्स एंड और जुडिशरी कैन पनिश पीपल फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर क्राइम्स एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दीज द वर्क ऑफ द जुडिशरी डज कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू द फॉलोइंग नंबर वन इज डिस्प्यूट रिजोल्यूशन सो स्टूडेंट्स द जुडिशियल सिस्टम प्रोवाइड्स to us a mechanism of courts for resolving or solving disputes or misunderstanding between two citizens or citizens and the government or two state governments and maybe central and state governments all right after that second point is judicial review in this the judiciary has the power to strike down particular laws passed by the parliament if it believes that these are a violation of the basic structure of the constitution it means students if judiciary not satisfied about the any law which was passed by the parliament so judiciary can take decision on its only for the safeguarding of the common people understood after that topic number 2 is upholding the law and enforcing fundamental rights so students as you know very well that every citizens of india can file his or her case or can approach the supreme court or the high court if any one believe that his her or their fundamental rights have been violated or neglected or whatever constitution says that rules and regulation not followed by any one okay understood for example hakim sheikh who was an agricultural laborer and fell from a running train and injured himself and whose condition got so worse because several hospital refused to admit him why because he was poor and he was unable to pay fee even all right that's why he had filed his case in the supreme court and on hearing his case the supreme court ruled that article 21 which provides every citizens the fundamental right to life also includes a right to health it means every citizen of india has right to life and right to health in any hospital or in any medical institution of india whether he is a rich or poor or she is rich or poor so finally 
the supreme court directed the west bengal government to pay him compensation again one question will arise here that what is compensation so students the meaning of compensation is something especially money awarded or given to someone in recognition of loss suffering or injury understood and this case in west bengal famous as the name of paschim banga khet mazdoor samiti versus state of west bengal in 1996 after that your next topic is what is an independent judiciary so students for example your family's land which is taken by one powerful politicians and uh, you and your family cannot do anything against him because he was so powerful and students even that politician has enough power to control the judiciary or judicial system of india so students if you or your family file a case or approach in high court or a supreme court to take out your ancestral property or land in this case may be polish possible that politicians who has enough power to control judiciary even all right so maybe he trying to influence the judicial process and maybe the judge make all judgments in favor of that politician so students on the basis of above example you can understand clearly that this is the violation of law and against the rule and there is no any judicial system or independent judiciary in india so students our indian constitution protects against the kind of situation by providing for the independence of the judiciary it means no one can dominate judicial system for the any case or anything in favor of him all right because point number 1 is judiciary is the guardian of the constitution and defender of fundamental rights of the people and for performance of this role it is essential that the judiciary must be independent and give a free and fair justice to everyone without any domination or without any power of someone all right point number 2 is india has an independent judiciary that allows the courts to play a central role in ensuring that there is no misuse of power by the legislature and the executive understood and after that point number 3 is it plays a crucial role in protecting and the safeguarding of the fundamental rights of the citizens 
because anyone whether he is rich or poor politician common people or any powerful person can approach the courts if they believe that their rights have been violated any how understood after that students your next topic is what is the structure of courts in india so students there are three different levels of courts in our country and several courts at the lower level while one at the apex level number one is district level or subordinate court and students most people interact at this level because each district of india is presided by district judge it means every district of india has a district court to solve the problem of the local people at very lower level after that second one is the state level court and this state level court is known as high court is the highest court of the state and next one is supreme court and students the supreme court of india is the highest judicial authority and it is located in new delhi and is presided over the chief justice of india and the decisions made by the supreme court are binding on all other courts in india it means students if you have any problem so you can file your case at district level but if you are not satisfied for the justice of the district court then you can apply in state level court or high court of india which are in every state and after that again you are not satisfied for the justice of the high court then finally you can apply in supreme court and the decision of the supreme court will be last decision all right so students in india we have an integrated judicial system it means the decision made by higher courts are binding on the lower courts as all these different levels of courts are connected to each other and after that in this topic your next important point is appellate system it means how you can appeal in the courts so students this means that a person can appeal to a higher court if they believe that the judgment passed by the lower court is not just okay and this system exists in india it is the another way that defines the integration of all the levels of courts understood so students let us understand what we mean by the appellate system by discussing a case state it's mean delhi administration versus lakshman kumar and others from the lower courts to the supreme court so students story is given like this 
so students it was a case of domestic violence by the indian federation of women lawyers against the accused lakshman kumar and his family members so it is a criminal case and the victim was sudha bose so students shakuntla and shrinivas were living with four sons subhash lakshman vinod and ram avatar and two daughters subhash was married to madhu and lakshman was married to sudha who was the victim so students on first december 1980 after 9 pm the neighbors of sudha heard screams for help and ran to her house they saw sudha in fire and lakshman and subhash nearby the neighbors put out the flame and took sudha to the hospital accompanied by her husband and sister on the way but students sudha died next day morning at the hospital and sudha had given an oral declaration and has signed a written statement accusing her mother in law of the act so students the case was tried by the delhi court and the accused shakuntala lakshman and subhash were convicted of murdering sudha based on the evidence they appealed to the high court which gave a judgment that sudha had died of accident and set the three free so students in all over india people started opposed this verdict and filed a case through the indian federation of women lawyers in the supreme court so students finally the supreme court gave the final verdict which accused lakshman and his mother sent them to life imprisonment and acquitted subhash so students on the basis of above discussion you can understand now that if any one or people of india is not satisfied for the justice of district or high court then they can appeal in supreme court so students in 1985 supreme court heard this appeal against the acquittal of lakshman and the two members of his family and the supreme court heard the arguments of the lawyers and reached a decision that was different from that of the high court they found lakshman and his mother guilty but acquitted the brother in law subhash because they did not have enough evidence against him all right students so students on the basis of above example and description you can understand clearly what is the structure of courts in india and how we can apply there for the justice so students please listen my lecture very carefully and if anywhere if you have any doubt please contact to me all right thank you and have a nice day